Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for sticking around for the last talk. Um, so today I thought I would tell you about one of my favorite problems. It's, it's a problem at the intersection of several topics in extremal combinatorics and discrete geometry. And there's been some recent developments. So I'll do my best to say some things about that and add a word or two about some of these connections, whatever possible. Uh, so without further ado, this, this problem asks, asks the following question, given a positive integer little n, uh, what's the smallest number of points that you need in space in order to ensure that no matter how you replace them, you always get n points in convex position? Uh, so just for the sake of clarity here, a, a set of n points is in convex position if no point is in the convex house affected by the other. Uh, and we're only going to be considering configurations of points in general position to avoid triviality. So this will mean no b plus one points in the same affine hyperplane. Like that. So it's a classical problem. It's known as the Erdos Sekeres problem. And I imagine a lot of you in the room probably have heard about it before. Uh, but uh, I'll say some simple things nonetheless. So typically, this parameter introduced by Erdos and Sekeres is denoted like this, where, uh, where the, the subscript D stands for the dimension. Uh, it's already Quite interesting to compute for, for small parameters as well. So the, the, the classical uh, example is the case when d equals two and uh, n equals four, where it's uh, obvious that you can place four points in the plane that are not in convex position, but requires some some justification that no matter how you put five down, uh, you always have a convex quadrilateral. This, this can be verified, of course, by drawing some pictures and, and then judging based on uh, on, on the the size of the convex hull of the diagram. So for instance, the picture looks like the first one, uh, any four points you pick in convex position. It's like the second one on the right. And, uh, well, the four points that form the convex hull are in convex position. Or if it's the most interesting case where the size of the convex hull has this three, well, you draw the line passing through the two points inside, and then, well, it intersects two of the sides of the triangle because there are no collinearities. Uh, and the, the four points the two inside and the two points on the side that it didn't intercept, they are in convex position as well. Or if you uh, don't want pictures, a nice quick way to see this is to recall that K5, the complete graph on five vertices, is not planar. So no matter how you put the points down and draw the segments between them, two segments must intersect and the four points involved will be, will be in convex position. So pick, pick your favorite of the argument. Uh, and I invite you to try to generalize, to extend this to n equals five. It's, it's already not so easy anymore. Um, and in general for arbitrary n, if, if this is your, your first time ever seeing this, this parameter, this problem, it's really not obvious at all a priori that such, such a quantity should exist. That namely there's, there's a finite number n for which, which this thing holds. And, but of course uh, it does, otherwise I wouldn't need 15 minutes at all. Uh, so this, this was famously established by Ardush and Sekeres in 1935 and in a really famous paper in extremal combinatorics. In fact, Erdos's first, first paper in, in combinatorics. Uh, so this, uh, for any, any dimension D at least two, any number N, there is some finite big N for which no matter how you put N points in space, you have N in complex position. And uh, uh, this, uh, this, this paper of theirs has, uh, has in many ways, set the groundwork for a lot of the stories that we we uh, we all learn from Matoria the Ramsey theory and so on. Uh, so I would be remiss to not mention at least the, the the quick argument because it's short and sweet. So what's the basic idea? Is that uh, well, to check that endpoints are in convex position in the plane. Uh, it's uh, equivalent to check that all four tuples of points are in convex position. So what you can do is consider the four uniform hypergraph and points where n is some parameter to be decided later. So do you, this is a <coughs> hypergraph where edges are four tuples of points and you color them blue or red depending on whether the four points are in convex position or not. If the picture looks like this on the left, you make the four points blue, the picture like on the right, you make the four points uh, the subset they induce red. And uh, by Ramsey's theorem, which uh, heard before last week about uh, if n is sufficiently large, you either have a blue copy of the, uh, 
complete hypergraph on n vertices or a red copy of the complete hypergraph on five vertices. Um, what, what do these things mean? So uh, the, the latter is impossible because that would mean five points where all the four tuples look like the picture on the right. And we, we saw that, that that's impossible from the previous analysis. And uh, in the first case, the endpoints correspond to a set of points in convex position. So a little bit more formally, this establishes this connection between uh, this, uh, the stickerish parameter and uh, what we know now known as this uh, full uniform of diagonal Ramsey number parameters and five connection, which really invited uh, the study of Ramsey numbers alongside such parameters, discrete geometry also. Uh, however, that being said, quantitative bounds by this argument uh, are not, not so good. So this is a uh, the best best known bound on, on, on the Ramsey number, which is a much more recent bound than the theorem, due to Colonel Fox back of um, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, it doesn't come close to uh, what, what this Erdos-Sikrish parameter has been uh, predicted to be. And as a matter of fact, Erdos and Sikrish themselves in the original paper come up with a different proof that uh, that uh, this number is finite, and uh, in fact that it's exponential in n. So we have bound this by a different quantity that I won't really get too much into uh, for the purpose of this. So a different Ramsey function uh, that in fact is completely well understood. It's equal with this binomial coefficient, which is equal to the n. And uh, this was rather uh, satisfying because it's not too difficult to construct configurations of points of size to the n over two without convex subsets of size n. Uh, of, of size that's exponential enough, so two to the n. <coughs> um, by the way, this looks like the, the upper bounds for standard Ramsey of diagonal Ramsey numbers. Not the coincidence of so these problems, are, of course, related. Um, I won't. I promise. I won't tell you the proof about this uh, at all. Except that uh, maybe I should say that on its own, this line is the beginning of many different nice stories of on its own. Some of which were with similar occasion here in the years that passed by uh, Guy Moshkovitz and uh, Chinyun Park. So for instance, just to give you a, a taste, this binomial coefficients is not a coincidence that it's also equal with the number of line partitions with entries in the interval from zero to n minus two observation uh, due to Moshkovitz and Shapira, which, which actually generalizes in a nice way to a statement about higher dimensional partitions. Which, uh, which actually helps understand the uh, high dimensional partitions a bit better than, than, than I guess before. So, this, this connection with the Ramsey theoretic problem. Um, so, uh, in, this, in this paper, to, to finish my, my, uh, my rant about it, uh, Erdos and Sekeres also suggest, perhaps uh, prematurely at the time, based on just numerical evidence for small. <laughs> That this parameter should perhaps be equal to two to the n minus two plus one, just based on the values for n at most six. But then conveniently, conveniently, 30 years later, they back it up with a really beautiful construction uh, of a set of two to the n minus two points without the n in convex position, which which uh, is a bit more complicated. I, I won't uh, won't be able to tell you. Um, uh, but uh, the conjecture. Uh, has uh, recently seen uh, very exciting progress. So in a beautiful paper in 2016, Andrew Suk <laughs> settled it in an approximate sense. So he proved that uh, this parameter in two dimensions is equal with two to the n plus little o of n. So somehow the dramatically uh, uh, different than the analogous status for diagonal Ramsey numbers, which, which uh, is somewhat still stuck at the, at the similar chain of inequalities there. <clears throat> Um, so this is a two-dimensional story. What about higher dimensions? So this, uh, the situation gets a bit interesting for various reasons. So uh, perhaps because uh, like for other problems in high dimensional sets with in convexity, the answer is not easy to predict. Uh, so on one hand, for example, a simple projection argument gives you this <clears throat> Fact that this function, when well, if you keep little n fixed, uh, this is a function that's decreasing in a dimension. Um, so this uh, this is almost uh, almost trivial. So uh, and and uh, 
I tested my GeoGebra skills, so I want to, to share also this, uh, <laughs> this argument. So essentially, let's say in three dimensions, if you start with uh, nine points, which is, by the way, the answer for the Pentagon problem, if n equals five, uh, in, in the plane, among any nine points, you have a convex pentagon. So if you, if you want to prove the same fact about 3D, among any nine points, you have uh, five points in, in convex position. Well, start with those blue points in R3, take a generic plane and project on them, apply the two-dimensional problem there, find the convex pentagon, and then lift uh, back this pentagon, the pre-images, or five points in convex position in R3. And of course, this, this the same applies for arbitrary dimension and gives you this uh, simple, uh, simple chain of inequalities. So it seems like finding, finding convex sets in higher dimension should be a bit easier, but uh, perhaps uh, surprisingly, this, this chain of inequality has been more or less all we've known about this problem uh, for a while, except for uh, slight modifications where instead of projecting from infinity, you project maybe from a point of the configuration to a plane that separates it from the other points, so that gains some constant, uh, uh, additive constant. Um, this has been more or less the same, and uh, there have been, in fact, conflicting conjectures regarding how, how small should uh, these parameters be in higher dimensions. So in particular, whether or not ES3 of n should be dramatically smaller than ES2, ES2 of n, uh, should, should it be exponential or not? And uh, perhaps, I, I don't really have many explanations be, behind the difficulty, but perhaps one, one reason is that uh, beyond, besides being a higher dimensional convexity problem, it's also a higher, higher uniformity problem. In similar ways, Semenides theorem about three term arithmetic progression is a statement about k minus one uniform hypergraphs. But, uh, the uniformity of which increases with the length of the progression. So same here, for example, the Erdos-Sekerich argument I started with, uh, the, the Ramsey one, uh, only gives this bound for the dimensional Erdos-Sekerich parameter. Uh, so it's, it's a D plus two uniform Ramsey number, uniformity which increases with the dimension. So uh, getting a handle on, on, on these parameters also requires some uh, high uniformity combinatorics. Let's, let's call it that. Um, so uh, I was I'm happy to report one uh, one uh, tiny tiny uh, break in the trivial chain of inequalities. So uh, not too not too long ago, earlier this summer, in joint work with Dimitri Zakhar, we managed to uh, see something new about uh, the three-dimensional problem. So we confirmed indeed that uh, the answer is sub-exponential if you start with the little o of n points. In R3, then you have always an income exposition. So there is some gap there on the right side. In particular, uh, this, this uh, implying that all these high, high order Herdosekerish functions are sub exponential in N, just because of the inequality. Uh, yeah, so uh, I wanted to mention that uh, I won't say anything about, about the proof, just that um, it's effective. So this little o. In the exponent means n divided by <coughs> five times iterated logarithm, which uh, is not really optimized uh, with, with some further effort that's somewhat orthogonal to the main ideas can be uh, boiled down to n divided by three times iterated log. But uh, more than that, uh, we don't really know. Uh, so uh, I'll, let, I'll end with two natural open questions uh, that uh, currently thinking about and uh, please uh, regard it as an open invitation to, to, to join me if you find any of this interest, interesting. So the first one is, well, uh, this is still zero, our result is still 0% in some sense of the, of the chain. So uh, can, can one say anything about higher dimensions? Uh, and this is not exactly the right question uh, in a quantitative sense, but already it would be interesting to show that in D dimensions, it would require asymptotically less points than in D minus one dimensions for any dimension. Um, are, are, it's somewhat in the air, so our, our tools believe should work for D equals four, but higher dimensions, I think new ideas uh, would be needed. 
And the second question is uh, on the new ideas in higher dimensions. Say something about two dimensions. We believe there's a good chance that this error term can possibly disappear or be reduced to polynomial power in, uh, in two dimensions using these ideas. That's uh, all I had. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Any questions? Is it easy to say what is two to the n over two set of points without any n? In yes, it is. Uh, so, should I go back? Let me see. I can yes. So it's a it's a doubling procedure. You start with four points in, in the plane, but uh, not in convex position, and then you pick a generic direction, and then you double slightly in that direction the picture. Uh, so you can get a set of eight points, and then that one doesn't have hexagons in convex position. And you keep doing that. Pick, every time we pick a generic direction and double, uh, the size of the largest convex subset does not increase by much, by two, something like that. The configuration just becomes a power. What's the status of the diagonal Ramsey problem? Uh, Nothing. There have been nice, nice developments on the upper bound side, but only super sub exponential gains over the quarter to the end. Uh, but uh, proving that the upper bound is at mo is uh, four minus epsilon to the end. So no, expected the upper bound is yes, I would I would expect it's exponentially better than <laughs> what lower bounds are known in higher dimensions. Uh, that's an excellent question. So, uh, um, not exponential. Uh, the best construction uh, is due to Carly and uh, Walter, and the bound has the shape and uh, for the d dimensional function, two to the n, the power of one over d minus one, one over two dimension minus one. Exponent there, and uh, there's still a surviving conjecture of Fourier that that could be uh, maybe the correct uh, the correct answer. Thank you.